this module is continuation of module 1.22. We try to derive a theory from uh, with the help of different disciplines, with the help of different studies and we discussed three assumptions of their theory. Remember a theory presents assumptions, they are hypotheses. Hypothesis means something that is verifiable, that is testable, that can be modified, that can be changed, that can be challenged, that is not absolute. So remember these are assumptions, they are not absolute truths. Okay, so three points were uh, discussed in the previous module and uh, the remaining points are being uh, shared with you here in this module. Our culture tells us that men and women are equal in rights and abilities, okay. Egalitarianism, uh, social equity and equal human rights, uh, these are the voices that are very common these days on every social forum, you know. So under the influence of this, we are made to believe that we have same abilities. We are uh, at the same pedestal, being men and women. Now, if this is the situation, how would we understand the gender difference? That is still being um, talked about by feminists. Okay, if still we have gender differences, so this is because of something else. Cultural stereotypes of gender are androgynous. Androgynous means I have purposefully selected this difficult term. Because when we study a new discipline, a new field of study, we should also know its particular terminology and language. If you remember in the uh, early modules, we have talked about endocentricity, uh, endocentric or asymmetric view of gender, if you remember, uh, where we discussed that men are more powerful than women. Asymmetric, there is no symmetry. So androgynous means that uh, something which is not related with males or females. This is a new term. So the things which we uh, hear these days about gender equality and uh, social justice with uh, women and their civil rights, etc. They have changed our mind. They have made these stereotypes about differences between men and women as insignificant, meaningless. This is what we are calling androgynous. The sex differences we see in behaviors now the question which I left unanswered, this is the time to answer it. That if now culture, now culture emphasizes that we are same as men and women, then why there are still voices about gender difference? So these gender differences are not because of culture, they are because of biology. They are because of natural, uh, natural makeup, natural built up. Intonation relates with emotions because this is the focus of our talk, intonation and gender. If we talk about intonation, we have discussed that intonation expresses emotions and emotions 
are related with naturalness right and naturalness is related with women so this is how because of natural and biological qualities intonation shows something gender intonation becomes part of female gender otherwise there is culturally these days the days where we are living the world we are living in at cultural level there is no difference the fifth point of theory of intonation and sex is there are possible range of pitch variations available to both men and women they share the same language system if they share the same language system they share the same range of linguistic resources available to both sexes but men and women select some of them habitually it is their preference that preference may be because of cultural factors that preference may be because of personal preferences personal purposes women select from a range full of dynamism that is lack of control they would select from a pitch range where loudness is available to them why do they need it to express their emotions openly uncontrollably and men they would select from a different range and in that range there is lack of loudness there is control and restraint there is emotional stability so they don't need this kind of thing loudness etc in their pinch, in their pitch range these differences are assigned metaphorical meaning by culture so these differences actually they are natural but they are given cultural meaning metaphorically how it happens men style is said to be cool it has feature of coolness and women have uncontrolled expressiveness this is how something natural is made metaphorical and cultural it is given social importance whereas if you remember our previous discussions we have proved that even men can raise their voices they can talk in loud uh, voice when they are in anger when they want to assert their authority etc and women uh, they are not always uncontrollable in expression of their emotions we have discussed these things the sixth point of this theory is women need dynamic intonation to get more attention now see this is in fact the rejection of the point of view that we hinted at in the previous point that they need dynamic intonation intonation with loudness because they are emotionally unstable but here we are being told that there is an other dimension of this dynamic intonation pattern they use it because they want to get attention of others attention of listeners and they also need it to tackle children to tackle children such kind of intonation pattern is required level tone won't work with children i see if you uh, you see some uh, male member of your family uh, that person cannot tackle a child if the child is weeping he would definitely feel embarrassed and he would uh, call other people to help him to tackle the child so 
being attached with women and children this dynamic intonation pattern indicates powerlessness for those people who believe in male superiority who believe in patriarchy who believe in stereotypes cultural stereotypes the old cultural stereotypes because these days cultural stereotype uh, types uh, have undergone a lot of changes because of awareness about uh, justice and civil rights etc the last point is different intonations for the same act is required by cultural expectations different intonations for the same act are required please read it are required by cultural expectations culture expects that this is desirable for men and this is desirable for women if you remember that uh, uh, we have talked about a phone answering uh, incident in which uh, a male uses level tone and female uses a rising tone because rising tone is desirable for female and level tone is desirable for males males actually they are assertive they are authoritative and this uh, tone uh, suits them suits their authoritative tone individual choice sometimes it is the situational cho uh, choice to get things done we have discussed it that for uh, achieving certain purpose some communicative goal we may adopt different intonation pattern uh, we know that if i am among children if i am with parents if i am in class if i am with friends which intonation pattern would work this is uh, this depends on situation where we are individual choice may not work as desired this is also possible because you make choice of an intonation pattern single intonation pattern can convey different meanings to different people this is what we said in the beginning of this discussion that how something is said is not important the more important thing is how something is interpreted so people may interpret your intonation pattern differently sometimes misunderstanding and misinterpretation takes place people are offended it is because the same pattern may convey this is the point more than one social meaning so the choice of intonation at individual level is never conscious when we make such choices we are not conscious of our choice or the effect we cannot predict what kind of effect my choice would have on the addressee this is unpredictable we conclude this theory covers the complexity of relations between intonation and gender so the relationship that we were studying between choice of intonation and gender this is not state forward this is very complex phenomenon but it is based on one thing that uh, we have proved is that somehow in this relationship still cultural stereotypes play a central role these findings which we have discussed from uh, are based on different studies they are not final still more research is required especially in the uh, perspective of grand changes uh, i give you a task and that is very reflective type of task if you think over each point of the theory of sex difference that we have discussed think over it and uh, write your own reaction to each point of this theory as a male or as a female so that would reflect your own personal critical understanding of this theory of sex difference